Welcome to sermons from St. Paul's Lutheran Church of Minot, North Dakota. St. Paul's is anchored in the message of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins, for the church and for the world. The following sermon is from Rev. Dr. Matthew Richard. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. While Jesus was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died. But come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went through all the district. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. It should not surprise us that that leader, that ruler of the synagogue, came to Jesus for help. For his daughter, yes, his precious, beloved little daughter had just died. You see, that is what a good father does. A sane father, that is what a sane father does when their daughter is in trouble. They try to fix things. Or at least they try to find somebody to make it better. In the Gospel of Mark, we also hear more about this father. We hear that this father, he came and he he fell at Jesus' feet and he begged him for a divine intervention. This desperation makes sense to us too. We can all relate to this, even agonize with the fear, the concern, and the anxiety of the father. All this stated, imagine for a moment, yes, imagine for a moment with me if this father did nothing, if he did not show concern about the illness of his daughter. Imagine even if he denied the reality that she was sick in the first place. Can you imagine? Hey, dear father, your daughter, yes, your daughter is about to die. It is rather serious. You know, you should maybe call a physician or someone else, or something more. You must do something. Nah, she's perfectly healthy. She's normal, she's whole, she's standard, she's complete. Stop being so unloving. Stop being judgmental and cruel. Why do you always have to focus on the negative? Now, if we heard this, we would cry out. This is an outrage. She is not normal, she's not standard and whole, but rather she is dying. For the love of God, do you not see this, Father, that she is motionless, that she is helpless? Lord, have mercy. Your very flesh and blood, your beloved daughter, is dying, and you are either a callous monster or you're blind to reality. And yet, this is how we act day after day, my friends. You see, we may not be a callous monster but we are certainly blind to reality. You see, we live in a culture that covers sin and death with fragrant perfume, saying all is well, we need not worry. We live in a time that attempts to standardize and normalize sin and its seriousness. 
In a word, we take that which is contrary to God's law, which is our sin, and we attempt to write it off as if it's okay. By doing this, we attempt to take ourselves off that metaphoric deathbed of sin. We take whatever sin we cherish, you know, those pet sins that we all cherish And we attempt to remove these sins from the category of sin and we place them into the category of ordinary, the category of whole and healthy. Furthermore, if we can get enough people around us to agree that we aren't dead in our sins, well, then we can at least feel a sense of normalcy. Furthermore, if we can be so clever to get national government to pass laws that tell us that we're not guilty and that we're not wrong, that we're not sinning, but that we're justified, well, then we must be okay then too. Let's face it, my friends. As humans, we try to live under the illusion that we are healthy and whole. We are blind to the reality of our sin. We do not want to be a needy, helpless corpse of sin sprawled out on a deathbed, but rather we want to be whole, we want to be alive, and we want to be independent. And so we attempt to convince ourselves that we're okay. We create social media profiles where we look great and where we look whole. We gather people around us to affirm us that we are successful and honorable. We speak positive thoughts, not only for others, but for ourselves to paint this picture, this self-portrait, that we're complete. That our sins are not as abnormal as we would think, but that our sins are rather respectable. Tragically, we will even accumulate pastors for ourselves that will tickle our ears to suit our own fancy to tell us that we are fine and dandy. All along, though, all along, though, we have this heart, this heart of sin that is buried underneath all of our attempts of self-justification, a heart that daily spews forth the sickness of evil thoughts and murder, adultery, lust, unnatural fornication, theft, lies, coveting, gluttony, and slander. And it goes on and on and on. There's no bottom to the depths of this sinful heart. Even though we might be able to keep up a good appearance on the outside, with people in the church people in the community and our neighbors and friends and family, inside there still is death. Inside there is death of sin, jealousy, greed, malice, and every form of evil. Indeed, even if we can avoid looking bad on the outside, keeping our darkest and deepest fantasies hidden away in our minds, my friends, they cannot be hidden from the eyes of God. The Lord, he actually sees through our smoke screens. He knows that we are dead in sin according to our old Adam. He knows that we're not alive in righteousness. We're not as whole and alive and vibrant as we might think that we are. And so, my dear friends, yes, my dear friends, we need to repent We need to repent of our sins and we need to repent of our self-deception, the blindness to the reality of our sin. You know, those times that we say that we have no sin. Yes, we need to repent. We need to acknowledge this day, yes, this day, that according to our sinful nature, that we are dead in our sins. Confess that you have tried to not only deny and diminish the stench of your sinful hearts, but have tried to normalize it by sprinkling potpourri over it. Dear friends, stretch out. Stretch out on that deathbed beside the ruler's daughter and die with her. Yes, die with her. But what happens? What happens to us poor, miserable sinners when we lie in death with that dead daughter? What happens when we are exposed and unmasked for who we are, what will the Lord do with the broken and destroyed and hurt and crippled and wrecked and collapsed and sinful, torn down heart and a sinner like us on a deathbed? 
Will Christ be troubled by this? Will he be bothered by this? Will he come to the rescue? Will he even care? Jesus did. Jesus did care for the father's daughter, that ruler's daughter. He came to the rescue. He cared. He worked his way through that crying and that grieving and that wailing crowd to that dead girl. And then he touched her. He grabbed death by the hand and the girl got up. Dear friends, we need to keep in mind that the essence of the gospel is neither a fluffy, abstract feeling of love or the spirit of tolerance, but rather what makes the gospel really good news is that the gospel is for dead sinners only. It is for the spiritually dead It is for you. It is for me. Yes, the gospel is about the forgiveness of sins, and it is for sinners only. You and I, you see, we cannot know the greatness of Christ's grace and forgiveness unless we first recognize the sickness of our sin. Therefore, good news, yes, good news can only be received by sinners. The gospel can only be applied to the blessed dead. However, By normalizing, standardizing, diminishing, and denying sin, no matter what the sin may be, we are essentially denying our need of the gospel and eroding the very fundamental core of Christianity. If you can recall, as Jesus said, those who are well have no need of a physician. You, though. Yes, you who have ears hear this. You are the blessed dead. Indeed, those who act like they are sinless, whole and alive with their own spiritual righteousness, their own spiritual pumped up righteous resumes are the living dead. You though, you who confess that you are poor, miserable sinners in thought, word and deed. Yes, well, you, you are living because Jesus forgives and gives life to sinners You who have ears here, blessed are you when you confess your sins and when you die with that young girl. For just as Jesus took that daughter by the hand and said to her, little girl, I say to you, arise. He also takes you by your heart and he says this, oh, my child, I forgive you. I say, arise. I love you. You are mine. Come off of that bed of death, that bed of sin, and live again. What assurance, my friends. What assurance we have in the gospel. The worst of our sins, the darkest of our desires, and the silly games that we play, they are no more in Christ. They are forgiven in Christ Jesus for Christ's sake. They are crucified under Christ. They are nothing. They are gone. They're forgiven. They're buried. They are done in Christ. And in Christ, we are given life, eternal life. This, baptized saints, this is the message of Christianity. This is the message that St. Paul's Lutheran Church and the Christian Church lives by. We hold to the message of Christ crucified for sinners. Come hell or high water, this message is our constant. It is the message of our assurance, our hope, our life. Whether in season or out of season, Christ is for sinners like you and like me and like our neighbors. Therefore, do not fear. This day, do not fear. Your Savior, Jesus Christ, is the one who makes his way through the crowd, through the noises and the busyness and the wailings of life to touch you with water and bread and wine while saying to you, Get up! Your sins are forgiven. You are whole and you are alive in me. Do not fear. Jesus died. He has risen. He has reached out and taken you from the deathbed of sin unto himself. Do not fear. Believe. Rest. And know that you are forgiven for Christ's sake. 
In the name of Jesus, our life, our hope, our resurrection. Thank you for listening to today's podcast sermon. You can access a full manuscript of today's sermon from Pastor Matthew Richard's blog at www.pastormatrichard.org or visit St. Paul's website at www.stpaulsminot.org. The Lord bless and keep you.